Hello there, it's George the Fragrance Apprentice, and today we're going to be talking about, yes again, cold weather fragrances, but you would like some unique cold weather fragrances, understandably. There's going to be a million top fives, a million top tens, as you already know. So my job today is to try and provide you with a relatively unique list, a list of fragrances that if you buy any of these, definitely everybody around you isn't going to be wearing them. Now that's not to say that they're bad, these fragrances are pretty well respected in this community, but just in general, nobody's going to know what this is, which is good for you, because you'll stand out and it'll be unique. So first fragrance is this, this is Misfit by Arquiest. Now I did a uh, little video uh, the other week, uh, it was uh, five fragrances in an hour, I shot it in different locations, it was a uh, really interesting video to do, quite a personal video for me, I talk about this at length, um, but I can add some, some new things to say about it really, which is, so this is patchouli, patchouli fragrance. Usually what you do with patchouli is you either put, because patchouli can be quite, can be one hell of a note, so it can be too much, it can be too intense. So you usually, with patchouli, you either do one or two things. You either add something like honey, which calms it down, or chocolate, or citrus, to calm it down. And this does have that citrus, but it's mostly letting the patchouli do its thing, and the way that it's been blended makes the patchouli very dusty, very powdery. I mentioned in the video, uh, the one hour video, that this reminds me of certain shops and certain stores uh, that we have in Britain that are kind of pagan-esque, but they usually just sell incense, um, they sell bric-a-brac, they sell clothing, they sell scarves, um, and these are quite unique little uh, shops, but there's quite a few. There's probably a lot around the world, but it reminds me of those types of shops because patchouli is just so powdery and uh, so lovely and really enjoyable. This is very comforting, like a super duper comforting fragrance. Uh, whenever I wear this and I, I put it on uh, myself, I'll just smell it and I'll be like, that's really nice, it's really comfortable. But the thing that I didn't say in that video that I'm gonna say here, what I realized over the past couple of weeks is this fragrance looks like it's something from the 70s and the 80s. The font, the title, the bottle design. This was only released very recently, like in the past year or two, and won an award. Um, but if you told me that this was a fragrance from 1979, I would completely believe you. And I didn't see that at first, but it just looks it. And it does have that era of scent as well. Yeah, this is a fragrance that's handling patchouli in a very old school way, but it's so comfortable so welcoming and yeah you're definitely gonna smell unique i would recommend this highly to either a man or a woman but if you want a more traditional way of handling patchouli this is behold patchouli by daniel gallagher it's daniel gallagher's magnum opus in my opinion it is his best fragrance bar none you know um he did a fragrance before this called wicked good and it was very very chocolatey dense dense chocolate and I appreciated it and I enjoyed it, but I couldn't wear it. And I thought, you've really struck something with this chocolate accord. This cocoa is great and, you know, the way that you've done it is fantastic. But it did smell when I wore it as though I'd just put chocolate all over myself. And um, that's not really a thing I, I want to go for. Um, but then he added patchouli with this. And this is essentially like Wicked Good Mark II. It's Wicked Good with patchouli and orange to the point where it smells like... a uh, Terry's chocolate orange, which is very nice, but that patchouli gives it that fragrant gravitas that makes it so that you can wear it. And it does smell pleasant, does smell good, and you haven't just thrown chocolate pudding all over yourself or melted Terry's chocolate orange all over yourself. It doesn't smell like that. It does have that vibe and it does have that smell to a degree, but it's done really, really well. Very, very unique. Daniel Gallagher is loved and adored and um, revered here on YouTube and on Base Notes and for Grantica and all that. But this is definitely, in my opinion, his best. But the point being is that not everybody knows Daniel Gallagher, right? Especially in your social circle, probably not everybody's going to know Daniel Gallagher and not everybody's going to know this fragrance. You 
can get unique comments like, well, that smells like Terry's Chocolate Orange. You can get that. I've had that a couple times. So it's a great fragrance to wear and wonderful for the cold weather. Moving swiftly on to this, this is Anatolia by Prin. So here's the deal. If you're a fan of Boss Bottled, or any of the, the 9 million flankers of Boss Bottled, you might want to check this out purely on the basis that this has got apple and cinnamon, but it's also got incense and suede and honey, and it makes the texture very, very rich, maybe a bit too rich, uh, almost tar-like. Um, and there's this kind of intense, almost rum alcoholic through line that goes through this fragrance that I could imagine could put people off. It's very oily, um, very concentrated, and that might not be as friendly uh, as you'd want it, but the good thing with that is that this lasts and the projection longevity is beast mode and it's amazing. Great, great fragrance. Um, but that apple is sweet, but it also has like a, a bitterness, like when you first bite into the apple, and that's cascaded by the rum and by the honey and the suede. So this is unique, definitely. And if you're expecting just a niche version of Boss Bottled, I'd hold your horses. It's a bit more complicated than that. But if you do like Boss Bottled or just apple, apple and cinnamon, you should definitely check this out. Then we go on to this. This is Moments by um, Motif Olfactive. I talked, of course, about Monoasis in the summer. This hasn't captured me as much as Monoasis did. Monoasis is, is another level and, and I really, really love that fragrance and, and think it's absolutely amazing. This is not as good, but um, if you enjoy like what Tom Ford did with Oud, like Oud Wood, Tobacco Oud and uh, Oud Fleur, this smells like it's from that family, right? And it's 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 lovely. It, it's, it's great and it is unique and I think that it is a fragrance that I'm definitely wearing and enjoying, but it I could imagine that this could be more for somebody like Chris, uh, my friend Chris over at Fragmental. This is a more mature fragrance. This is some for somebody in their 40s, really. And this is a very, very confident and ballsy fragrance. You know, you really have to be confident to pull this one off. So maybe this is a bit too unique, but hey, um, Mr. Oz at Motif Olfact, if that is his modus operandi, that's his MO. He wants to make stuff that is unique and that is different and that's challenging. But yes, I do like it. Um, Udi, very exotic, very spicy, um, very, very strong in that sense of being a very spicy, uh, exotic fragrance with Oud and lots of different spices. It does smell like, you know, you're... A, at the spice market in Istanbul, um, or yeah, you, you've just got a lot of things going on here, but it is tempered with that very fracturous, lovely wooden argo wood warmth that does tone everything down, that does make it so that it doesn't smell as though it's just a million spices coming at once, but it's very, very spicy and very unique. Finally here, this is for Pans 1270. I wanna bring this back. This was so hyped, I talked about this previously, such a hyped fragrance, such a loved and adored uh, fragrance with such reverence. People would go mad for this fragrance. I mentioned it in a previous video, I'm gonna say it again. This was being hyped to the moon before Jeremy Fragrance even had a YouTube channel. That's how big a deal this was. This didn't need Jeremy, this didn't need anybody. It was just doing its own thing um, by itself. And again, I'm surprised that this has got all of the things that people like now. Pineapple, it's got that, but it's this juicy pineapple dessert rather than a smoky oak mossy pineapple, of course, it's in Aventus. So you've got that juicy pineapple dessert with this bubblegum sweetness that is, of course, kind of similar to one million, but more tame, less juvenile. There's this wonderful wicked vanilla, and this really takes you somewhere. And speaking of unique, there is nothing like this apart from 1270 because this was a fragrance that got hyped and loved but it was before the cloning era of fragrances that well there was always a cloning era but before the hyper you know our maths and doer this has not got enough hype on it to justify a clone company cloning it so that makes it unique that makes it worth the price point because it's the only thing out there that does this and it's wonderful because of that and a great great fragrance i 
think it's great. And if you want a new night out fragrance, I swear to you, if you want a new cold weather night out fragrance, check this out. That juicy pineapple dessert with the vanilla warmth, with that bubble gum entree coming in and that woodiness to keep it all leveled. It's beautifully constructed fragrance. This is great. Frappan is of course a liqueur company. So it's essentially a pineapple woodsy cognac of a fragrance. It's amazing. Anyway, I'm really happy with this list. I'm actually very proud of this uh, list because I really wanted to give you something unique and something different that you could pick up this winter, this autumn, something special and something different. And I hope that these fragrances have given you something to think about. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and the fragrance press, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.